Uh, momentum stocks have kind of underperformed the last week. Small caps, internet names, uh, biotechs. Is that perhaps a sign that we should be cautious even as we've seen this incredible V-shaped recovery? I think there's been a tremendous amount of choppiness so far in the market in 2014. And, you know, we've seen uh, tech stocks take off and then collapse. So we've seen hedge funds take on very concentrated positions in a couple of these sectors and then back away. And a couple pullbacks of greater than 5%, which, by the way, is normal for for a year uh, mm -hmm. and people have forgotten that because we'd gotten to a period where we had very few pullbacks we had very few moments of volatility in the markets yeah. and everyone had gotten comfortable with just a, st a straight ascent and so now we think you know we're going to see additional choppiness uh, we'll see some of these momentum stocks back off we'll see some of the uh, higher flyers particularly on the valuation side get sold off when people get fearful but our view is up still for the equity market it's still up for now but are we moving to a new phase I mean we've been anticipating for so long where monetary policy is no longer the biggest driver of equities. That's right. You know, this is, well, it's no longer going to be the biggest driver of just U.S. equities. What we are seeing is a very divergent set of monetary policies around the world. Yes. And that's going to govern how we think about investing and allocating in assets. While the Fed is going to be normalizing policy, we expect the ECB to add some more stimulus. The BOJ certainly gave us a, another shot of adrenaline the last Friday with their announcement of increased asset purchases. And against that backdrop, I think you have to be a lot more creative about how you're allocating your assets and have a lower expected return assumption for, for especially for that, that new mediocre that you're referring to, Christine Lagarde. That, that Martin Sorrell doesn't agree with. She does, he doesn't agree That's with Christine You're Lagarde. not a new mediocreist? No, I'm what, when it, in, in the sense of what the world dribbling along at lower growth rates. And yeah. Dribbling yeah. along at lower That's yeah. my yeah. quote of the day. Dribbling along <laughs> is what we've been doing. <laughs> no, but it's, it's when we talk about a V-shaped, as Scarlett says every time, V-shaped recovery. In the, what happened in 2009, we had the, the slump after Lehman. Then we recovered sharply in 10, and then it's almost like a square root sign with a, a gently up, up, up line. 11 was a record for us. 12 was a record for us, 13 was a record for us, 14 but for sterling probably would be. So if you, you look at it, but it's a gentle slope upwards. But so the real world is only expanding, you know, come back to the cheap money argument, the, 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 uh, the stock market okay. world obviously is different. The money question is, do you and your strategy for 2015 adjust to Kate Moore's world? Do you have a timidness I, because of Janet Yellen, Mario Draghi and Mr. No, I think Well, we've got this strange balance at the moment. We've got, you know, U.S. tightening, BOJ, you know, more liquidity, Europe more liquidity. The honest answer to your question is we will continue to be cautious as we go into 2015, reflecting our client mm. activity, which is to be cautious, not to be expansive. Kate Moore, your clients at J.P. Morgan Chase, they're not, they're not, cons they're not thinking about median incomes because they're not dealing with median incomes. But part of the new mediocre is this stagnating income over time that just isn't going anywhere, is in fact going down. Is that a problem for the stock market going forward? Will that eventually catch up with us, this lack of consumption? Actually, I think the lack of consumption is more of an issue for GDP data than it is for corporate earnings. Mm -hmm. If you look at what drives corporate earnings, it's much more business investment. And we need to see company management teams feel like they have more clarity and like they have a, a greater visibility into the future before they continue to invest. We mentioned this a little bit when we were talking about deal flow and whether or not we were going to see companies reinvest in themselves or look to acquire or spin off assets they thought were undervalued in the market. You know, what we really want to see, as I was saying before, is the CapEx. We want to see companies invest back in themselves and really say, we have this confidence in the future that in and of itself will be a, a propeller for earnings and we expect then to be uh, the, the next leg for hiring. What are your clients saying in terms of policy differential? How do they want to be positioned going into next year? Look, it's a little bit confusing for everyone, but everyone feels confident that the U.S. recovery is on track. In fact, we're now saying we're not in recovery, but in fact an expansionary phase of the U.S. economic cycle. Um, that's not quite the case for Europe and Japan. We're more neutral on European equities. We have some um, opportunities opportunistic uh, positions in Japanese equities, but U.S., because of its expansion, is our highest conviction call.